I can't believe they kept us here until noon. The Lord's Ball was already running well into the night, even before the murder occurred. You'd like nothing more than to catch up on your lost sleep, but you made a promise to Aster. This doesn't make any sense. Beatrice was with me and my brother the entire night. Right, you were there when she met with him in Steelwind. She couldn't have stolen the Sword of Spell Eating and have murdered her father. I don't understand. Of all the people that could have done this, why would Steelwind suspect a blind woman? Mr. Cuthbert, could you defend Beatrice against these awful charges? I don't think I even need to. What? Beatrice is Ruby's client. I'm sure that she'll be the one defending her. Well, that certainly puts my mind at ease. <laughs> Sadness and fear. What's wrong? I don't know if I'm asking too much, but could you still investigate the crime scene for me, Mr. Cuthbert? What? But we just said that Miss Timora will. I know, and I don't doubt her abilities. But Beatrice is a dear friend of mine. I'd like every chance for her to be found innocent. He said that she was a dear friend. They must know each other since she was a Frega. But why would Miss Timor of all people represent a member of a noble house? There are still a lot of things you don't know about her. Of course, I'll also compensate you for your services. Consider yourself blessed. A commoner like you can only dream of a job like this. A Alaric? The tiny prince has a point, though. A payment from the crown prince does sound tempting. I can't believe this. Celeste returns to the ballroom. She's changed back into her normal clothes. What's wrong? The people in the coat room said that they couldn't find my sword. They told me that someone must have stolen it. What? Hmm. Why would someone want to steal Celeste's sword? Aside from your group, everyone else at the ball was an aristocrat. You do recall her saying there was forged in the Eastern Kingdoms. Someone might have stolen it because of its rarity. We can probably keep an eye out for it while we investigate the matter. This might all just be some kind of mistake. I hope so. But anyways, where should we start first? We should head to the crime scene. I remember hearing that they found Lord Frega's body in his study. Let's go over there after we finish here. Each of these tables have a centerpiece of flowers on it. To be honest, it kind of looks tacky. Their notion of aesthetics must fly over the heads of peasants like us. These chandeliers look fancy enough to be worth a small fortune. The banking houses are loaded, aren't they? Of course, it's not their money. Repario Arcanum! Are you worried about your missing sword? No. Well, yes, I am worried. But I'm sure it'll turn up eventually. She's trying her best to hide how worried she is. You hope you're able to find her sword somewhere. Where should we go next? The body was supposedly found in Lord Frigga's study on the top floor. We should probably start our investigation there. We get much diversity in locations, you know. You arrive at the crime scene and see the usual swarm of Inquisition knights. However, you also spawn some members of the King's Guard. They must be working together since the victim is from one of the Pillar families. I wasn't expecting to see you here, Mr. Cuthbert. I thought Ruby Timor was defending this case. Prosecutor Steelman approaches you as you enter the study, and she's followed by an unexpected yet familiar face. Wallace, what are you doing here? I... He's here as my aide for the investigation. You don't doubt Wallace's abilities, but you can't think of any reason why Steelman would need his help. But you suppose it's none of your business. Anyways, we're here on behalf of Crown Prince Aster. He hired us to investigate this case independently. I see. I'm sure he just wants to make sure the investigation goes smoothly. Well, if you're here on behalf of His Highness, I'll do whatever I can to help you. This whole situation is quite unorthodox, but your goal remains the same. Perhaps Steelman can tell you more about what happened. What can you tell me about the murder? William Frago was found dead in this room after the lockdown was lifted. Wait, lockdown? What lockdown? From what we can tell, his throat had been slashed open with a letter opener. 
suppose the death was blood loss. Both of his carotid arteries were severed. Here's the autopsy report for a detailed description. 3.12 a.m. Cause of death, blood loss. Death followed seconds after wound inflicted. Scratch marks on the face and back. Traces of illusion magic were found on the body. Were you able to find the murder weapon? Yes, the murderer left it at the scene, crime scene. It was a letter opener owned by the victim. The murderer must have found it in this room and used it. There was one strange detail about the weapon. The handle was completely shattered. We're not sure what to make of that detail, but it's as if something crushed the handle using tremendous force. So, that just repeats what was said. What could have caused the handle to shatter like that? What's wrong? You can't see it, but the entire room is covered in traces of abjuration magic. Everything is glowing white. Right, that makes sense. There were several anti-magic fields covering the manor. Those fields probably left traces of abjuration everywhere. I won't bother showing you the traces of abjuration if I find I find while we're here. Repario Arcanum! There's a trace of illusion magic where the body was. The assailant must have used some kind of magical disguise. Or they turn themselves invisible. It's a bookshelf filled with books. I wonder what kind of books Lord Frey owned. Wait a minute, they're all blank. All of his real books are on the floor of his desk. There's a window that leads into this room. Could the murderer have escaped through here? No, the window doesn't open and the glass is magically reinforced. There's a large mahogany table at the end of the room. Lord Frigga must have done his work here. There are several books about economics and politics. It doesn't look like there's anything of note. It's a fireplace. Could the murderer have entered through here? That wouldn't be possible. The chimney is far too narrow. Even a small child wouldn't be thin enough to fit through it. It's a painting of some sort of scholar. There's some text on it. Rook Resignar. Economic scholar and aristocratic accountant. He was known in some circles as Rook the Cook due to his ability to cook the books at the Four Pillar Houses. Rook the Cook? Sometimes I wish I could have a nickname like that. What about Crimson Demon? Not that one. There's a pool of blood and a chalk outline where the body must have been. Actually, whoa, 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 did I look? Okay, I just wanted to make sure the chandelier was legit. You mentioned that there was a lockdown. When did this happen? You didn't notice? The Inquisition did try to be discreet. But everyone noticed the commotion Beatrice and the two princes made over it. I suppose you two must have been lost in your own little world, weren't you? <laughs> Anger. Oh. Well, anyways, you said that Lord Frigga's body was found after the lockdown. That means that something else must have happened prior. Supposedly, someone had broken into one of the Heralds and Exhibits. One of the magical artifacts was stolen. So there was also a theft last night. Does the Manor's lockdown system behave like the one at the Imperial Academy? The systems are somewhat different. Unlike the Imperial Academy, the lockdown only prevents people from leaving or entering the Manor. So not all of the rooms were locked. But what about this specific room? This room does have an abjuration ward that locks the door and prevents teleportation in and out of it. And in addition to that, the system placed an anti-magic field over the manor. An anti-magic field? What is that? Anti-magic field is a spell that nullifies all magic within it. So... Kuteria? Lasts indefinitely but requires concentration. Ten foot radius sphere. The system somehow covered the entire manor in this effect. If you notice, there are several purple crystals embedded in the walls of the manor. Each of those crystals produced an anti-magic field during the lockdown. So we get information about the lockdown now. 
so no one could cast magic during the entirety of the lockdown. Not exactly. Someone could have used the stolen artifact to circumvent it. Wow. You mentioned that someone could have used the stolen artifact to get past the anti-magic fields. Which artifact was it? It was the Sword of Spell Eating. That was the demon-forged item that could supposedly nullify magic. If the legends were true, someone could have used it to counteract the lockdown system. After Lord Harrelson reported the theft, the Inquisition discreetly placed the manor on lockdown. They searched every room in the manor to try to find it. But it was eventually found in Beatrice's bedroom. And that led them to believe that she had stolen it? That's correct. The King's Guard moved to arrest her, but Prince Aster ordered them to stop and step down. A little sad there. It didn't look like she was planning on fleeing, so they planned to wait until after the party had ended. But then they found Lord Frigga's body. Correct. We believe that she used the stolen sword to nullify the magical locks and break into Lord Frigga's study. But if she had the sword, why wouldn't she use that to commit the murder? We're not entirely sure. We have a few working theories. She might have wanted to prevent the theft from being tied to the murder. Or perhaps she had more confidence wielding a knife over a sword. Regardless of her reasons, it's clear that the sword wasn't the murder weapon. So she's not just being implicated in Lord Frigga's murder, she's also being charged with stealing the sword of spilling him. But what possible reason would she have to do either of those crimes? Since the body was found here, was Lord Frigga locked in this room during the lockdown? Yes, William Frigga knew that this room should have been secure. He was supposedly in a bad mood and had locked himself in this room for most of the night. He refused to let anyone into the room, and the only person he spoke to after that was his daughter. His daughter? Are you talking about Miriam? No, Lord Frigga had another daughter. I'm referring to... Leifi Frigga, Lord Frigga's middle child. She tried to tell her father about the theft, but he was apparently preoccupied with something else. He said that he wanted to stay in his study for the rest of the night. When did this happen? It was shortly before the lockdown was activated, a little after 1am. I see. So, well, that's our first time seeing her. Um, after meeting with Beatrice, William retreated to the study, locked himself in, refused to speak to anyone else, and the person he spoke to was Leifi. Told him about the theft of the sword. William didn't care and went back to business. Leifi must have been the last person to see Lord Frigga alive then. You should speak with her and get more details about Lord Frigga's actions that night. By the way, Steelman, do you have a map of the manor? I do. Would you like a copy? Please, thank you. So now we know the first floor layout. And the second floor layout. Were there any other witnesses aside from Leafy who saw Lord Frigga that night? Perhaps someone heard what happened from a nearby room. There was someone murdered. There was someone who heard the altercation, but it was quite obscured. A servant was trapped in a storage room nearby. There's an air vent that connects this room with that storage room. He supposedly heard sounds of a struggle through that vent. What did this witness hear? There were sounds of a struggle before he heard Lord Frega choking on his own blood. When the lockdown was lifted, he was informed the King's Guard of what he heard. That's when they discovered the body. I see. Who is the servant? I believe you actually know him. His name is Jan Hughes. Wait, Mr. Hughes is here? You never expected to see him again, much less here of all places. But if he heard the altercation, you'll definitely want to speak with him. I think I'm lacking a lot of information about the defendant. From the way you were both acting, you and Aster seem to know her. Your mentor didn't tell you about her? No, I try not to pry into her business. I see. I honestly don't know much about what happened either. But Beatrice was Lord Frega's eldest daughter and the former heir to House Frega. Former heir? About five years ago, she fled Frega Manor and went into hiding. None of us knew where she'd gone. She ignored any attempts we made to contact her. She even used her magic to prevent us from scrying her. Last night's ball was the first time in years that Aster and I had seen her. So that's her disappearance story. But if that's true, how did Miss Timora meet her? Would you happen to know why Beatrice was meeting with her father after all these years? I have some ideas, but nothing concrete. I was hoping you could tell me. 
Taimor and Beatrice have both refused to disclose anything about their meeting. Damn it. What could that meeting have been about? Speaking of which, I haven't seen Taimor anywhere in the manor. As the defendant's attorney, I would have thought that she'd be here to investigate the murder alongside you. That is strange. But Miss Taimor has always had her own way of doing things. Perhaps she's using a different strategy. Anyways, I imagine that she met with her father to request financial aid. Why do you say that? I have it on good authority that she was deeply in debt. That's the only reason why she would speak with her father after all these years. It's also why I believe she murdered her father. You think she murdered him for his inheritance? It's the only motive that makes sense. Alright. There's a lot to work through here. The prosecution will try to assert that Beatrice committed the murder. But what would she have needed to do to carry out all the actions described? So the first thing we need to do is narrow down the time in which the murder occurred. The body was discovered after the lockdown was lifted, and Leifi Frega saw her father alive before it was activated. He entered his study and watched as the lock engaged, and she watched as the lock engaged. So, murder occurred after. Oh, I can actually change these here. Probably never left the study. Okay, so there actually was during the lockdown. Alright, I thought it was... There we are. The murder must have occurred during the lockdown. But that means that the murderer somehow got past the abjuration wards that protected this room. Those wards blocked teleportation, and they magically locked the only door leading into this room. Steelman and the Inquisition believe that Beatrice used the Sword of Spell Eating to get past them. Regardless of what they think, we need to assume that the murderer used some kind of magic nullification to get into William's study. But that's not necessarily true, is it? What if the murderer entered the room before William locked it? If they were in the room when William locked it, they would have been trapped here until he decided to leave. Not only that, they would have been discovered the moment the guards entered his study. Maybe they used some kind of invisibility. Or they could have teleported away the moment the King's Guard unlocked the door. Teleportation didn't occur. We didn't find any traces of conjuration magic. What about Celeste's theory of an invisible assailant? I'll admit that we did find traces of illusion magic. But the moment the guards saw the body, one of them cast Detect Magic. With that spell, they would have seen any invisible people hiding in this room. Wait, you can use Detect Magic like that? Of course, it's standard procedure. Like all spells, invisibility leaves traces of magic on the person it's cast on. Some mages can use Detect Magic as a way to see through invisibility. So we know for sure that they weren't here before or after the lockdown. This means that whoever committed the murder used some way to bypass the abjur abjurative wards that, block that protect this room. So, method of entry is kind of obscure here. This is more about the wards, I guess. The next thing to consider is the murder weapon. It was a letter opener that was presumably owned by William Frega. The murderer probably used it to avoid leaving evidence that incriminated them. So, the murderer took murder weapon and still are found. A couple of these things, like, you have to pay attention to the preposition, I guess. There may be one word that changes a lot of stuff. Right, the letter opener came from this room. The murderer probably wanted to avoid using a weapon that would have implicated them. So they decided to use it and leave it here after the deed was done. But that leaves a glaring hole in the prosecution's case. And what would that be, Mr. Cuthbert? slip past the guards and enter Lord Frigga's study. Furthermore, how did she locate the letter opener if she couldn't see it in the first place? None of it makes sense. Committing this murder unseen would have been a tall order for anyone. I can hardly believe a blind person did all of this. 
You do well not to underestimate her, Mr. Cuthbert. What? You don't know her as I do. She's far more capable than you realize. She must be the one behind this. Sadness and anger. I suppose I wouldn't know, but the idea that Beatrice did any of this is still ludicrous. I suppose I can't change your mind about that. But I have to ask you a question, Mr. Cuthbert. What would you do if you discovered that one of your clients was guilty? What? I mean, I tend to have an insight into these sort of things. That would never happen. I've already seen your uncanny ability to read people, but I'm only hypothetically speaking. So what would you do if they were guilty? I suppose I'd withdraw and tell them to find another lawyer. And if no one else would represent them? I don't know. It would definitely be a hard choice for me. But I would never be able to represent them if I knew the truth. I just can't stand by and let a murderer escape justice. I see. Why do you ask? No reason. Okay. Anyways, she's made her stance clear. You still have a lot of leads to follow up on. You should move somewhere else. We don't want to go here, we just met the lady. You enter the storage room, hoping to investigate the air vent that connects to Lord Vega's study. When you come across a person laying on the floor. What? Jan, is that you? Aw oh, man, what's with all the noise? I was having such a good nap, too. Mr. Hughes? Whoa, it's you two. Why are you taking a nap in the storage room? I need to take a break from all the chaos going on. Kingsguard won't let us leave until they finish investigating the murder. As Papa's noble shooed me away when I tried sleeping on one of the couches. I didn't expect anyone to find me here. Anyways, the prosecutor told us that you'd heard the murder from here during the lockdown. Do you think you could tell us what happened? Sure, why not? My nap's kinda ruined anyways. There are several boxes in this room. They appear to contain various cleaning supplies. Okay, there's only three things to examine, it looks like. It's a stepladder. I agree. It's an air vent that leads into Lord Draga's study. Supposedly, Jan heard the altercation between Lord Draga and his assailant through this. Perio Arcanum! So you're working as a servant now? Not exactly, but I was part of the catering staff. The twins started their own food business after Frega threw us out of the academy. Right, sorry about that. I uh, just bumped the mic. Nah, it's not your fault. Even if Redmond was still headmaster, I'm sure the board would have found some other way to get rid of us. Wait, are Valentina and Valerie here too? No, they just contracted some staff to Lord Frega for the Lord's Ball. I think a bunch of other businesses did the same thing. You wonder how they feel about this. They lent their services to the very man who got them fired in the first place. William must have offered them a lot of gold. Man, I can't believe I got myself pulled into another murder investigation. Do I have bad luck or what? The prosecutor told us that you heard the altercation through the air vents. Could you tell us exactly what you heard? Well, I didn't hear everything. I was taking a nap in this room when it happened. Why were you napping here? I didn't have a choice. I accidentally closed the door when the lock was engaged. Before I knew it, I was trapped here. Right. You recall Steelman mentioning that. Anyways, I heard the sound of some kind of struggle going on. I couldn't hear everything, but I heard Lord Frega shout, Who are you? What do you want? That went on for a few seconds, then I heard the sound of someone getting stabbed. Did you hear this voice of the assailant? They didn't say anything, but I did hear them. Their voice was really raspy. I think they had a sore throat or something. Or they were trying to mask their voice. So, we have the clues that the assailant was not identified. And I have to be honest, I don't really know what the sound of someone getting stabbed sounds like. Uh, why did you enter the storage room anyways? The servants were complaining about rats running through the air vents, so they sent me to take care of it. 
I heard one of them running in the vents upstairs, and I followed it here. I figured I had nowhere else to go, so I opened it up and put a trap down. After I was done, I tried to leave, but the door was locked. I didn't have anything else to do, so I took a nap. <laughs> Rats in the vents. Eh, it was a mammal, all right, but I don't think it was a rat. He only heard a few words before the murderer struck the final blow. It doesn't give you much to go on, but his testimony could become relevant later. For now, you should probably move somewhere else and gather more information. Come on, Tracker, where are you? Fear. Achoo! As you enter Beatrice's room, you are unexpectedly met with a large cloud of dust. Wow, this place has not been cleaned. Oh? Your vision clears up and you realize that there's someone else in the room with you. Sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. Now, there's no need to apologize. But I would like to know what you're doing here. We're here on behalf of the Crown Prince. We're investigating the murder of William Frega. Oh, I see. My apologies, I didn't quite get your name. My name is Lefi Frega. Lefi Frega. So this is Lefi. According to Steel, when she was the last person to see Lord Frega alive yesterday. She might have some information about how he was acting that night. It's a highly extravagant bed. It looks similar to the one in Miriam's dorm. It's a dresser covered in a layer of dust. It does look like it's been touched in years. It's a table for guests, but it's extremely dusty. So where in here did they find the sword? Repario Arcanum! There's a trace of transmutation magic under the bed. I can't see it clearly. Let me take a closer look. It's Crimson Lotus! What? It's my sword! What? You never knew her sword had a name. So this is where it's been. But why would it be here? This is also the room where they found the Sword of Spell Eating. Are the two thefts related somehow? But why? The only thing similar about them is that they're both swords. There's definitely more to this, but what? So, we have the sword clue. I'm sorry for your loss, Lady Frega, but do you mind if I ask you some questions about last night? Of course. Prosecutor Steelman told us that you were the last person to see him alive. Did you notice anything unusual about your father's behavior? Well, he was extremely upset about something. I think Beatrice may have offended him during their meeting. Sadness and fear. The servant said that he wanted to be left alone. He retreated into his study immediately after their meeting. I tried to speak with him when the theft was reported, but he didn't much care about the missing artifact. He told me to leave him alone and let the King's Guard investigate the sword. He was probably busy making the changes to his will. Now that's an interesting thought. When did you speak with him last? It was before they activated the lockdown. It was a little after 1am that night. So we now have her testimony. Refused to speak to almost everyone. Tried to tell about the theft at 1. Probably the timestamp's the most important detail there. And do you have any idea what he was doing in his study? What? No, I have no idea. Fear? You detect some fear from her. Lady Frega, is there something you're not telling us? It's important that we know about your father's actions before his death. I'm sorry, I don't know anything else. My father was a private man and didn't share much with anyone, even his own family. I wish I could be of more help, but I really don't know anything else. I refuse to believe that's why he was killed. She's clearly holding something back. If you can reveal what she's hiding through an argument, she might be more willing to cooperate. But you'll need more information about William and his will first. In the meantime, you should figure out what else she knows. I noticed that this room hasn't been cleaned recently. Do you know why? It's because I've forbidden the servants from cleaning this room. And why would you do that? Beatrice was... is very dear to me, and I couldn't bear to have her room disturbed after she left. This room was the only memory I had of her after she left. You suppose that makes sense. 
She must have been holding on to hope that her sister would return. And what about the Sword of Smelly? Do you know how it ended up in this room? I'm not sure. It's possible someone planted it here to frame Beatrice. I can't say why they would choose this room, though. What kind of person was your father? <laughs> well, at least uh, you don't have all four to really make things confusing. So, I don't know what you exactly call the combination of sadness, anger, and fear, shock. But maybe borderline paranoia? I'm not sure. It doesn't look like William was very beloved. My father was a complicated man. He was a brilliant scholar and businessman, but he was a cold and distant father. I see. Did he have any enemies? As the head of House Frega, he controlled nearly every banking house in Wyvernguard. There were many people who resented his wealth and power. Can you remember anyone specific? Perhaps some that he slighted recently. There was Lloyd von Sanctus, the ruling lord of Oranax. Yes, I heard that he was recently involved in a court case. My father has been using the controversy as an opportunity to slowly take control of von Sanctus Industries. And from what I've heard, he's been extremely bitter about that. Von Sanctus' reputation must have taken a hit after the Dracogen trials. You doubt he'd get himself involved in another murder. But you can never be too sure. You'll want to speak with him and get more details. Although, would he even consider cooperating with you? Anyways, are there any other enemies he might have had? No, none that I can think of. What can you tell me about Beatrice Frega? I heard that she fled the Frega estate five years ago. Before she left, Beatrice is one of the most powerful mages I'd ever seen. She was... she is incredible. At the age of 18, her talent for magic could even eclipse my father's. But it was never enough for him. Sadness and anger? What do you mean? Before my mother died, he desperately wanted a son, but he only ever had daughters. Everyone thought that Beatrice would inherit House Frega from my father, but our family knew the truth. William Frank would never leave his legacy in the hands of a woman. What? No matter how hard Beatrice tried, my father would never acknowledge her accomplishments. He was extremely cruel to her. He constantly belittled her achievements and dismissed anything she said to him. And after the accident, he used her disability as an excuse to take away the little influence she had. There was an accident that gave her a disability. Is that why she's blind? If it's not too painful for you, could you tell me more about Beatrice's accident? Is this even relevant to the investigation? Sadness? Any small detail can make a difference. I need to learn everything I can. I'm not sure about exactly what happened, but it was a magical experiment gone wrong. Beatrice was working on a project at the Imperial Academy. She was trying to create a new spell formula. We're still not sure what happened, but there was an adverse magical reaction. The resulting explosion seriously injured her and left her completely blind. I can't imagine how she must have taken that. Actually, she was probably the most unfazed by what happened. But that didn't matter. My father saw his opportunity. He told me that he was relieving her of her duties so that she could recover. But I knew the truth. He was going to take away her political power and social standing. She was reduced to a mere decoration for our home. And that must have been why she left. Did she contact you during the time that she was missing? No, no one had heard from her during that time. But as much as I was worried for her, I, also, I was also a little happy. Unlike Miriam and I, she had finally broken free from my father. I have no idea what would have caused her to return here. You think you've learned everything you can for now. Perhaps you should move elsewhere. You explore the manor further and find one of its many sitting rooms. And there you happen to spot a very familiar face. He's sipping on a glass of wine, and his expression turns disdainful the moment you enter the room. Oh, wonderful. As if my day couldn't have gotten any worse. Von Sanctus, what are you doing here? The head of a noble house has just been murdered. I can't very well return to Ornax when my affairs are in such disarray. Anyways, forget what I'm doing here. What are you doing here? Oh, I just wanted to have a friendly chat with one of my favorite noblemen. I hear that you've been keeping busy since we last met. Must be difficult losing your empire to House Frega. 
Well, Tyrion knows what buttons to push. Tyrion, we do need his help. Is that so? And what makes you think I'd ever help the likes of you? Because it would take suspicion off of you. And let's face it, with your reputation, you could use all the help you can get. How dare you! I'll have you know that I am still a respected member of the nobility. Anger and fear? Respected? Is that why everyone's talking about is talking about your hand in Justin Way's death? Because the way I see it, being involved in another scandal would destroy what little remains of your reputation. But it makes no difference to me, and to be perfectly honest, I'd like nothing more than to drag you onto the stand and embarrass you a second time. <laughs> so he actually takes that threat seriously. You can practically hear him grinding his teeth together. Very well. If it means I won't have to endure your presence any longer, I'll oblige and answer your questions. It's a chair made from mahogany. Every part of this house just exudes wealth. Wealth that's been siphoned out of the common folk. There's a window with a view of the outside. It's as if every room in the house needs a chandelier. What a waste of the kingdom's gold. It's a shelf filled with books. Fake books. They're completely blank. It's a door that leads into a hallway. Perhaps I should have considered locking it to keep you out keep out undesired guests. It's a painting of some adventurers in a tavern. Ah, this must be Beatrice Frege the First. Which one? The first? According to legend, she was one of the descendants of the seven heroes of Wyvengard. She joined a band of adventurers that were traveling across the nation. It's hard to imagine the Fregas coming from such humble beginnings. Wait, what? What is it now? That muscular man in the corner, he just vanished. Are you... what are you on about? There was never a man there. Sorry, Tyrion, but he's right. No, I'm sure he was there. Are you feeling okay? Perhaps your lack of sleep is making you see things that aren't there. Repario Arcanum! Honestly, it's just one mess after another with you. Mess? Wouldn't you have much to gain from William Frego's death? On a surface level, you might be right, but it's far more complicated than that. House Frego controls the banking houses. They are the main pillar of support for Wyvergard's economy. William's death could have unimaginable economic consequences, regardless who inherits his house. I wouldn't be foolish enough to do something like that. That remains to be seen. Think what you will. There are others who would benefit from William Frigga's death. You mentioned that other people would benefit from, uh, from Frigga's death. Who specifically? If I had to venture a guess, I would say Lucio Steelwind benefits the most. Do you mean the prosecutor's father? But you just said that Lord Frigga's death could have unimaginable consequences for the economy. Do you think that brute cares about Wyvergard's economy? No, all that man cares about is power. Pure and physical power. How Steel and House Frega have been fighting for control of Wyvergard for generations. And in this long-lasting era of peace, the Steelwind's military have become far less valuable to the Crown. If it weren't for Lady Steelwind's engagement to the Crown Prince, they might not even be considered a pillar family anymore. The death of William Frega is probably exactly what Lucio Steelwind has been waiting for. And if our economy were to suffer, it would cause civil unrest. In a scenario like that, the Crown would have to rely on Steelwind's forces to maintain order. That does make sense. But could Arya's father really be involved with this? It's clear that you think Lucio Steelwind would have much to gain from this. But can you think of anyone else? Well, there is Harold Haraldson. That can't be his real name. But what would Mr. Haraldson possibly gain from Frigga's death? From what I've heard, William was planning to defund the Heralds and Hall of History. Really? Why would he do that? I'm not sure of the specifics, but supposedly Lord Heraldson has refused to omit the less flattering parts of Wyvergard's history from his exhibits. It's gotten blatant enough that he's drawn the ire of the king himself. They actually got into a very heated argument during the Lord's Ball about it. I heard that William declared he would be removing House Heraldson from his estate. 
You don't want to suspect Mr. Haroldson, but you need to examine every possibility. As the curator, he would have had the easiest access to the sort of spell eating. And he could have staged a robbery to cover his tracks. At the very least, you should give Mr. Haroldson a chance to explain himself. What can you tell me about the defendant in this case? What? She's your client. Surely you would know her better than I. Humor me. Well, I'm sure you're aware that she fled the Frega estate five years ago. In doing so, she not only dealt a blow to House Frega's reputation, but she also directly insulted the Crown Prince by breaking her engagement to him. Wait, Beatrice was engaged to Aster? Yes, it was quite a scandal at the time. And Lucio wasted no time pushing his daughter into the taking Beatrice's place. Oh, is that why those three were so awkward last night? Honestly, the situation is just an absolute mess. And that woman's return will complicate things. Beatrice's return complicates things. What do you mean by that? Do you find Beatrice's return to be inconvenient for you? What are you on about now? Please, don't insult my intelligence, Mount Sanctus. Fine, if you must know, my son was arranged to marry William's daughter, Lafey. Lafey? Since Beatrice showed no signs of returning, it was apparent that Lafey would inherit House Frega instead of her. I know when my days are numbered, so I took my pre so I took preventive action. Prevent preemptive action. I can't even talk right now, jeez. William wanted a male heir, and I needed to preserve my house, so we both came to an accord. My son and Lafey were arranged to be wed. House von Sanctus would have been absorbed, but at least my Jaden would stand at the helm of House Frega. You nobles are absolutely awful. I should probably consider myself lucky. Think what you will, I wouldn't expect a commoner to understand. That's the problem with your generation. You have no sense of duty or obligation. Lafey has already expressed resistance to this marriage, even though she was well aware of the details. Now I worry she'll hide behind her sister to end the engagement altogether. So, here we have the news about the engagement. So, Jane would inherit the entirety of House Frega. Lafey knew the marriage would affect the future of the house, resisted it. So it's largely a summary of everything that he just said. Lafey never mentioned any of this, and as much as you hate to think it, William's death would get her out of this arranged marriage. You should talk to her about this. Anyways, Von Sanctus gave you a decent list of suspects. You've probably learned everything you can from him for now. It'd be best to move and follow up on these leads. So I just want to make sure we've visited all those. Because this list keeps growing. I'm going to need to take a break in a moment. You return to the gallery and see a legion of knights inspecting the crime scene. However, you don't see Mr. Haroldson anywhere. The Inquisition must be questioning him. Perhaps you should follow another lead while you wait for him to return. Hmm. The display case that held the armbands of intellect is empty. The display case holding the earrings of vitality is completely untouched. However, still the artifacts ignored it. The display case is completely shattered. The thief was able to do this despite there being several abjuration spells protecting it. The painting of some sort of scientist. Intelligent autom automatons like arcane constructs? Supposedly, Lord Von Sanctus used Dr. Kufer's research to create those constructs. So in essence, Von Sanctus is taking credit for someone else's work. Uh... Combinatorial magic? What is that? I have no idea. Reparial Arcanum! There are traces of evocation magic on the shattered glass. Evocation is a school of magic that creates and unleashes raw energy. It's the most primal of the seven schools of magic. Someone must have used a powerful spell to blast the display case apart. engagement. Uh, 
Even after being blinded, Beatrice continued to fight for her freedom. Despite everything that's happened to her, she's always remained determined to live her life on her own terms. I remember when she first came back to the estate after her accident. My father was convinced that she'd be completely helpless without her sight. But she refused to let her blindness define her. She learned how to navigate the estate using her other senses and continued to study magic. It's ironic, really. My father tried to use her disability as a way to control her, but in the end, it was the very thing that allowed her to break free. I'm sure Beatrice's return must have been surprising for you. It is, to be honest. I've been hoping for years that she'd finally return. But now that she has, she's just gotten pulled into another one of our family's messes. Profile complete. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out me wandering around. Ultimately, where I needed to go was here. I didn't know about this at first, well, until I burned every single possibility elsewhere. I was going to examine different things in the background and like, what am I missing to trigger or something? And then I just stumbled into this. Leafy Frigga seems to be hiding what her father was doing in his study. You doubt that she's doing this out of malice. She might not even think that it's relevant to the case. But William Frigga had many enemies, and he retreated into his study to do something that night. And that something could be related to why he was murdered. Oh, we'll start an argument, all right. Is there something you're not telling us, Leafy? Oh, forgot, almost forgot. Has no reason to trust you. She believes in Beatrice's innocence over everything else. Usually sincere, so it's unlikely like she's involved in her father's murder. She wouldn't react well if you respond with a similar sincerity. Because I have a feeling that you know more than you're letting on. What? What was your father doing in his study? I already told you, I don't know. I have no idea what my father was doing. My father my father was a private man. He wouldn't share something like that with me. Now unfortunately I stopped playing this for a couple days, and I don't remember what piece of evidence has the contradiction in it. So it's not one of the artifacts, but I didn't notice all of them were in here. Lockdown system. Rat in the vent. Okay, I think that might be it. I have no idea what my father was doing. He was making some sort of change to his will, wasn't he? What? someone else tell him? Why did you find the need to hide this from us? I didn't. The thoughts you saw earlier seem to disagree with that. We've only just met today, so I understand if you don't trust us. But the Inquisition thinks that Beatrice murdered your father, and they claim that she did so for his inheritance. That's absolutely absurd. Regardless, your father's inheritance is a likely motive behind his murder. Many people would have a lot to gain from his death, including you. Excuse me? How could you even think that I'd be capable of something like this? I was not involved in this. So, they ask for sincerity. That's probably going to be this where you rationalize it. I didn't mean to imply that you were involved in this, but it's clear that the murderer's motive was to take control of House Frega. This means that their plan heavily relied on who William Frega was leaving his assets to. So I need to know, Miss Frega. How was your father planning to change his will? I don't know. I was never aware of the details of my father's will. I've already told him my father was a secretive man. He didn't share the details of his estate with me. Do we actually have it? Oh no, we wouldn't have it now, would we? I was thinking of the piece of evidence from earlier.
let's see. I think it might be this. Is that really true, though? What? I already know about your arranged marriage to Jaden von Sanctus. And I also know that as a part of this deal, Jaden would inherit House Frega instead of you. Sadness, anger, and fear. You definitely knew about this, and you heavily resisted the marriage in an attempt to stall it. Which means that you had some idea of how your father's will was arranged. So what aren't you telling me, Miss Frega? I... can't trust you. What? You are here on behalf of Crown Prince Aster. The Four Pillar families and the Crown have much to gain from my father's death. How can you assure me that this information won't be used against my family? So that's why she's been so secretive. So I assume the appeal would be it. There's nothing I could possibly say to make you trust me. But please understand, I'm only trying to find out who murdered your father. And to do that, I need to know everything that he was doing that night. So yeah, the hard part here is just remembering everything since I kind of stopped playing when I couldn't find out where to go. <laughs> I have no reason to trust you, but somehow I can tell that you're being sincere. Will you really protect Beatrice? You're about to reassure her that you will, but something in the back of your mind stops you. I'll get to the truth of what really happened. Fear. Okay, if that's truly what you're planning to do, I'll tell you what I know. I wasn't trying to be uncooperative, but I didn't know who I could trust. Considering the circumstances, that's perfectly understandable. I'm not sure why, but my father was extremely upset that night. According to him, Beatrice had returned and was even more impudent than before. He must have been angry about something she said during their meeting. Did he tell you what their meeting was about? He didn't, and I honestly didn't really care. I was just so happy that my sister had finally returned. But my father clearly felt the opposite. Before he entered his study, he told me that he would be pruning the family tree. He was going to disinherit my sister and several other members of our family. He probably started drafting a new will to reflect that decision. So now we have the inheritance clue. That's what I was looking for originally, and then I remember that was earlier. Different set of evidence. Has anyone found the draft of this will? No. It was one of the first things I looked for after the investigation began. The modified will is missing. You doubt that it would even be enforced. He never got a chance to submit it for probate before he died. But you can't discount the possibility that the murderer destroyed it. Did anyone else know about this? No one, I didn't even tell Lady Steelwind when she was questioning me. Because it would have given Beatrice a motive to commit the murder. Anyways, thank you, Miss Frega. Mr. Cuthbert? Yes. My sister is not a bad person. There's no way she'd do something like this. Sadness and fear. Despite what she says, she seems to have some doubts. She's in good hands. Ruby Timor is the one defending her in the trial, after all. I hope so. Anyways, you think that you've learned everything you can from Leifey. There's only one last person to speak with. Harold Haroldson. This is a complete mess. As you enter the gallery, you spot Haroldson inspecting the shattered remnants of a display case. If you recall correctly, the display case that he was looking at once held the sword to spell eating. Mr. Cuthbert, I had a feeling I'd be seeing you again. He's working for the Crown Prince, can he be trusted? It seems word has spread about your deal with Aster. Hello again, Mr. Haroldson. Harold. Right, Harold. I'm sure you already know that I'm investigating the murder of William Frega. And the prosecution suspects that someone used the sword of spell eating to break into Lord Vrego's room. I was wondering if I could ask you some questions about the theft last night. I'll tell you what I can, but I'm not sure how much I'll how, how, much, uh, how much help I'll be. So just let me let's see. Display case that held the armpits of intellect. Earrings of vitality. And we've spoken to those already. I can't believe a museum owns such a powerful magic item. I want 
you expect the noble houses to take them for themselves? Well, the nobility of today don't have much use for items such as these. The power of a lord is based on politics rather than magical strength. And a noble wouldn't want to wield the sword of a demon, even if the legends are just stories. A demon? Oh, right. The sword of spell eating is said to have been forged from a pact with between a demon and a mage. Isn't making a pact with a demon just asking for trouble? They'd definitely betray you the first chance they got. Well, legends say that demons often draft up blood contracts for this reason. Wait, do you mean like a legally binding contract? The concept is similar, but once you sign a blood contract, both you and the demon are magically compelled to fulfill its terms. It's said that violating its terms will result in instant death for the offender, no matter who it is. So I guess there's some protection. Well, as an attorney, I'm sure you'll understand if it's possible to exploit and use loopholes in any contract. And according to the legends, demons take great pride in their ability to deceive and corrupt people. According to the prosecution, the theft took place during the Lord's Ball. Shouldn't there have been plenty of witnesses in the gallery at that time? That's the strangest thing. Supposedly, the gallery room was completely empty when it happened. What? That can't be right. And honestly, I have no idea how anyone could produce enough magic to shatter the display case anyways. Were the wards protecting the case that powerful? They were powerful, but it's not the issue here. It would be one thing to dispel the wards and remove the glass protecting it, but it's another thing entirely to completely annihilate the abjuration wards and shatter the glass. Can they use one of the lockdown crystals from the wall? Doing something like that would require an extremely powerful spell, far more powerful than what would have been needed. So they mentioned the blood contract here. Powerful spell completely shatter the magically protected glass. I'm not sure how this didn't even neutralize the glass around it, but sure. So you're saying that the force applied was excessive? Yes, and that's not the worst of it. It's clear that the sword of spell eating wasn't the only item that was stolen. What? Was another artifact stolen that night? You mentioned that another item was stolen. Yes, it's extremely concerning. After the Sword of Spell Eating was reported missing, I checked the other exhibits. That's when I discovered that the armed bands of intellect had been stolen as well. Fear. And unlike the Sword of Spell Eating, we still haven't found the armbands. You look at the glass case where the armbands used to be. They've been removed, but the glass case is completely intact. The thief didn't shatter the glass. Exactly, moreover, the armbands were actually replaced with a very well-made replica. What? So, they had been stolen in advance, we find out. What is going on here? The two thefts are completely different from one another. Are they even related, or did two different thieves coincidentally steal from Harold that night? You mentioned that someone would have needed a powerful spell to shatter the display case. Wouldn't that narrow down the list of suspects for the theft? Not everyone attending the ball could cast spells that powerful. Well, according to the Inquisition, Beatrice Frega's magic was powerful enough to have done this. Discounting the fact that she's completely blind. Yes, I'm well aware of that. And it doesn't sit quite right with me, either. Was there anyone else in the Lord's Ball capable of matching Beatrice's power? Only the heads of the Four Pillars could have invoked magic this powerful. But apparently, Beatrice is an exception to that. Is Beatrice really that powerful? Or is she being scapegoated by one of the house leaders? But the cases can be opened normally, can't they? Otherwise, how would you transport the artifacts from place to place? Yes, the magical locks on the case can be disabled. Fearful? You detect some fear. Is he hiding something? How are they normally disabled? They can be turned on and off using a spoken password. And how many people know this password? Only myself. I personally oversee the transport of these items when they're moved. So we have the security system details. So Harold could have stolen the sword that night. Could he have staged the robbery to cover his tracks? Harold, a witness told us that you got into an argument with William Frege on the night of the murder. Was William Frege planning on defunding the Heraldson Hall of History? Anger. Yes, he was. He made that very clear. But that doesn't mean that I had anything to do with his murder. We're not saying that you did, but I need to explore every possibility. So I need to ask, did your argument that night turn hostile? 
I'll admit that our discussion turned heated, but it never escalated to threats or violence. With how insulting he was, it should have. Well, he was being unreasonable, and I was frustrated, but that's all there was to it. I observed what happened to him. The eye shows more resentment than he's laying on. Did you have any conflicts with him prior to that night? We have had disagreements in the past. He was receiving pressure from the royal family about what I was displaying to my museum. The king believed that some of my exhibits were too controversial for the public eye. What do you mean? I'm sure you've noticed the rising tensions between the common folk and the nobility. I've never been one to shy away from the bloodier parts of Wyvernguard's history. The citizens must know about these parts of history, otherwise we're liable to repeat them. However, the king believed that my historical exhibits did nothing but dig up old wounds. Nothing but simpletons, a lot of them. The nobility thinks they can smooth public relations by censoring history, as if they couldn't get any worse. Anyways, it's clear that Harold is passionate about his work. Would that passion drive him far enough to commit murder, though? Thank you for your time, Harold. Harold, I think we'll be on our way now. So before we move forward, did he say Harold said I misread it? Nope, he said Harold. We have a lot of info, but none of it really leads anywhere. So many people had a motive to murder William Frega, but who actually did it? Perhaps you should take some time to review everything that you've learned. Motives aside, let's go over the events that happened that night. It all started when the Sword of Spellian was stolen. What do we know about the Thief of the Sword of Spellian? We don't have a specific suspect, but we do know something about them. The thief might be a powerful mage. Half B is A, but we, I don't think that's the case. It would be one thing to dispel the wards and remove the glass protecting it. But it's another thing entirely to completely annihilate the abjuration wards and shatter the glass. Doing something like that would require an extremely powerful spell, far more powerful than what you would have been than what would have need, been needed. The thief was a powerful mage. That's the only way that they could have shattered the magically reinforced glass. But what about Harold? He could have just unlocked it using his password. He could have stolen the sword and staged a robbery, but he couldn't have shattered the glass. Only a powerful mage could have done that, and I doubt Harold would lie about that when he easily could have, when he could easily confirm it with Steelwind. Right, but then what happened next? They brazenly stole. Ugh, I can't even talk right now. They brazenly stole the sword of spell eating. This caused Harold to report the theft to the King's Guard. After Lord Harrelson reported the theft, the Inquisition discreetly placed the manor in lockdown. They searched every room in the manor to try to find it, but it was eventually found in Beatrice's bedroom, and it led them to believe that she had stolen it. That's correct, the King's Guard moved to arrest her, but Prince Aster ordered them to step down. And then there's Leifey's statement. My father was extremely upset about something. I think Beatrice may have offended him during their meeting. The servant said that he wanted to be left alone. He retreated into his study immediately after their meeting. I tried to speak with him when the theft was reported, but he didn't much care about the missing artifact. This happened before they activated the lockdown. It was a little after 1am that night. What does this tell us about William Frega? Leifey's account gives us a clear fact about when William died. William Frege was murdered after the lockdown was activated. This means that whoever killed him bypassed the lockdown and broke into the magically locked room. They had to have used the sword, right? That's likely, but not necessarily true. An anti-magic field would have also had the same effect. The murderer could have stolen the spell eater's sword to throw off the investigation. But anti-magic field is a high-level spell, not many mages would be able to cast it. And I doubt any of the nobles here would let us see their spell compendiums. But because of how powerful anti-magic field is, we can still conclude that the murderer is a powerful mage. This actually narrows down our list of suspects. That's still not concrete evidence, though. And we haven't even spoken to all of the suspects yet. Right, you never had a chance to speak with Lucio Steelman. But given his status, you wonder if that would even be possible. Either way, it's a good start, and it's not as if we're defending this case. The trial is getting close anyways. You don't doubt Miss Timora's abilities, but you should share what you've learned with her before the trial begins. It's a little strange that you haven't seen her since the investigation began. 
But she might be meeting with Beatrice at the dungeon. You arrive at the dungeon and search for Miss Timora. She wasn't at the crime scene, so she must be here to discuss the case with Beatrice. Or at least, that's what you thought, but you don't see her anywhere. Oh, Mr. Cuthbert? Oh, hi. You were so caught up in your thoughts, she didn't notice that you were walking right in front of Beatrice's cell. I didn't expect to see you here. Celeste lets out a shriek as Eris approaches you two from behind. For a split second, you see her hand dart towards her sword. It appears that she still hasn't gotten over her instinctual fear of Eris. Eris, what are you doing here? Beatrice is actually an acquaintance of my father. He sent me here to help her through this ordeal. That brings up many more questions, but you don't really have time to pull on that thread. You have less than an hour before the trial begins. You need to find Miss Timora. Have either of you seen Miss Timora? I have some things to share with her. She was just here, but she left to retrieve some documents from her office. Do you have any idea when she'll be back? She didn't say, but if your discussion has something to do with the case, I could pass a message on to her. You feel a little hesitant for some reason, but it is her life on the line. If anyone should know about what you found during your investigation, it's her. Okay, let me tell you what I know. You spent some time going through your findings with Beatrice. From your list of suspects, to the possible motives behind the murder. You notice that with each revelation, she becomes more uneasy. The idea of someone framing her must be stressing her out. I see. You've certainly been very thorough. Fear. Yes, but I still have no concrete evidence that points to anyone. We underestimate him. If he reveals he's finding Prince Aster, he might suspect something. Fear. What? Sorry, I was just deep in thought. And you were able to catch one of those thoughts. Beatrice, I'm sure that you're aware that Prince Aster has your best interests at heart. I know. Even though we haven't spoken for the last five years, I still consider him a dear friend. Sadness. Then I suppose you have no issue with me sharing these findings with him. Of course not. This is bad. Even he would support us if he knew that I was involved. Wait, what was that? Her thoughts just said that she was involved. Did she actually murder her father? Is something wrong, Mr. Cuthbert? You look a little pale. Beatrice was actually behind this, but how? She's completely blind. She could have navigated through the manor and avoided the guards. No, he must be taking her thoughts out of context. That's it. Mr. Cuthbert, perhaps you should get some rest. You look dreadfully tired. You think very carefully about what to say next. There's one way to get a certain answer through the eye. But if you're wrong... Beatrice, you weren't actually involved in this, were you? Tyrion? You see her gaze narrow in response to your question. Once again, she claps her hands together. She's clearly trying to stay calm. Do you suspect me now, Mr. Cuthbert? You didn't answer my question, Beatrice. As if I didn't even need to justify it with a response. But no, Mr. Cuthbert, I was not responsible for my father's murder. At least not directly. I was technically an accomplice. An accomplice? Did she work together with someone? Cuthbert? Miss Timora. Your mentor seems to have sensed the mood in the air. She raises an eyebrow at you. Miss Timora, can I speak with you alone for a second? Okay. What's wrong? Is everything okay? Miss Timora, Beatrice, she... She actually did murder William Frega. Miss Timora's gaze narrows. Her eyes dart about the room to make sure the guards didn't overhear you. What are you talking about? How can you possibly know that? I... I used the Eye of Horrors on her. She conspired with someone else to orchestrate William Frigga's death. Fear? Have you told anyone else about this? No, it's not as if they'd believe me anyways. You're the only other person who knows about my abilities. Okay, just stay quiet about this for the time being. Anyways, I need to get ready. The trial starts in half an hour. What? You're not seriously going to defend her, are you? Of course I am. I'm her attorney. But she's guilty. I saw it. Look, at this point, I don't know what you saw. 
Do you think I can just abandon a client minutes before a trial? No, but... It's not for either of us to decide who's guilty and who's not. Everyone has a right to an attorney. Our court system needs a defense attorney and a prosecutor to keep things fair. And she's going to hate those words in a moment. More importantly, you had no right to use the Eye of Horus on my client without my permission. What? But... I don't have time to argue about this. We will be talking about this later. Before you have a chance to respond, Miss Timora walks away. Celeste sees both of you awkwardly sees both of you and awkwardly approaches you. Hey, Tyrion, is everything okay? Celeste, I think... Beatrice was actually behind this. What? You don't blame her for not believing you. It's not as if you can tell her about the Eye of Horus. Although, why haven't you told her? Alright, I believe you. What? You wouldn't say something like that if you weren't sure, right? But if what you're saying is true, what do we do now? You think long and hard for a moment. I don't think we need to do anything. What? Steelwind is handling the prosecution, and she's definitely no pushover. If Beatrice is truly guilty, I'll just have to trust her to get the job done. Either way, I don't think we're in any position to get involved. Alright, if you say so. It's really none of your business. You have no stake in this. You're not obligated to do anything. You've done everything you can. It's in their hands now. It's none of your business. This isn't your fight. William Frego was a tyrant and a bigot anyway. He's a noble who did nothing but steal wealth from the common folk. The world is better off without him, and it's not as you didn't try. All you have to do is wait for the trial to run its course. OBJECTION! Your Honor, I'm afraid you can't pass a verdict just yet. Mr. Cuthbert? Cuthbert? What the hell are you doing? I... don't know. But what I do know is that there was a massive contradiction in Miriam Frega's testimony. Who were you kidding? As if you were ever the type of person to stand by and do nothing. 